This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner, Dan Wolkenstein, and the one and only Ryan Dyroot here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bolt Family, Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Gentlemen, it's day nine of Chargers uh, training camp, and we're out here. It's hot, but hell of a good day at practice today. Ryan. Good to see you, my friend. It's, I've been wanting a long time to sit live for that opening. So great job, Jake Hefner. Uh, what a day here at Charters Camp down in Costa Mesa. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's that hot. It's pretty beautiful, especially in the great shade now. here. So, uh, But thanks for uh, having me on your guys' show. Absolutely. Of Absolutely. course. No, it's uh, today was a good day. Day nine, got to see some interesting events transpire. Uh, Donald Parham did have a quick injury. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. Looked like it may have been a hamstring. Not quite sure. Uh, but saw some great play from some of the star players from the trenches. We're going to get into all of that. So all the highlights, takeaways, recap, you name it. We'll be getting into that. Jake, Ryan, over under 80 degrees today. What would you say it was? Oh, over. It's over 80, yeah. Over? Yeah. Over. Over 80. Do you think that online has a spread for that? They no. got everything, basically. They have a hot dog eating contest. I'd, ra- I'd rather than not have an ad read for it either. <laughs> Jay, I, Jake said I better you wanted to do the ad read for this. Did you want to take that or... Do you want me to pay the bills for you? you know, Ryan, pay the bills for us. Yeah, you know what? I'd like to take a break every <laughs> okay. once in a while. So, uh, Well, Chargers Unleashed <laughs> and the LA Football Network brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use the promo code BLEAV50. That's B-L-E-A-V-5-0 to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first time deposit. Uh, football's back in full swing. Chargers out here, as we just said. Herbert is one of the favorites to win the MVP. You can throw some money down on that if... Uh, Maybe we can guarantee you win some money because I think Herbert has the job locked in. But betonline.ag, promo code BELIEVE50. Heather today, tell them the guys at the LA Football Network sent you. And from now on, we're literally just going to dub this clip of Ryan doing the bad reads from now on. <laughs> right off Mastered the jump, it. man. Yeah. That's why they pay it, you the big bucks. I took an improv class in high school, and I, I think it stuck with me. Paid and I was off. terrible. I was terrible in the class. Paid off. Terrible, but I think it's working now. Oh, I love it. Whatever it is. <laughs> I'll say six years later, but I don't want to show my age. Make you feel good, right? Yeah. So today, we got to see lots of players, obviously. Got to see Joe Lombardi, got Zion Johnson, Isaiah Spiller at the podium today. A lot of fans. A lot of fans. A whole lot of fans here at Costa Mesa uh, showing out. So maybe just go right off the bat from both you guys. I'll go after. Big takeaway. Things that kind of you're stuck to your brain as you're kind of wrapping the day up. You know, it's kind of a balanced practice today. You know, you had a couple of breakouts into special teams drills. Obviously, the individual drills will get in some of the standouts of those. Um, but even seven on a sevens, 11 on 11s, it seems like both sides really won. It, it, it was arguably probably the most balanced practice that I've seen as far as, uh, you know, there, there wasn't really one side of the ball that won the day today. But a lot of guys were getting some good wins today. A lot of good standouts from the wide receiver group, the linebacker group, some of the offensive lineman group, especially. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a, it was a really good practice. For me, I, I don't know if this is necessarily for just today, but I'll say overall for camp, one thing that always stands out to me is is how well run these camps are by Staley and staff. No, no wasted movement, mm. no wasted energy, no wasted time. Usually, you know, a two hour practice usually wraps up in an hour and a half because they, they say they, they put a plan ahead of time. And as long as they hit that plan, they're not going to extend the length amount of time doing things. So I always just notice that it just from drill to drill, no wasted movement, no wasted space. And, and yet again today, another another um, uh, drawing a blank on the word, a masterclass on, on that today. There it is. Love it. No, it's uh, honestly today, I think it's been one of those where you start to see standouts and talk about linebackers, receivers, you know, John Drake Carter, which we're going to get into, Damon Lloyd, Jamal Davis had a really good day today. Uh, Keenan Allen, Mr. INT, JC Jackson, another I- INT today. There's a lot of guys who did pretty well today. And um, I think it's one of those things where when you look at the depth of the depth of this team, it's actually pretty good. It starts up top all the way to the bottom. But you saw some standout play. And then, honestly, for me, one of the most exciting parts of this was see Rashawn Slater, Khalil Mack going after each other. Rashawn Slater got Khalil Mack trying to do a spin move on him, stonewalled him. I was like, I, I'm still pinching myself that the Chargers have Rashawn Slater, and he's that good. And Joe Lombardi talked about him at the podium, where how impressed he was and how like much of a perfectionist he was, where he's so critical of himself, saying he wasn't that great. He was laughing at himself from some of the reps last year. But... Rashawn Slater, Khalil Mack, those are two all-stars, and they are just going at it, and neither of them getting the best of each other. 
I love with with Slater that there were legit. I think you may have tweeted something about this earlier. There were legit NFL coaches that said he was basically undraftable because he was not prototypical tackle size. And he's too much of a tweener. Love seeing them eat their words <laughs> as he probably will be arguably the best tackle in football in the next five years. Dan, as far as let's flip it over to the defensive side of the ball real quick. I mean, for me, and we have plenty of notes on defensive players. Talk about it, but how are you going to possibly keep Damon Lloyd off this team? You can't right now. And especially with the situation right now with Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray. And good news, I mean, Drew Tranquil still not practicing with his groin in, uh, injury today, but he was on the far side of the field in pads just working out. So still no timeline on when he would, is going to end up returning. Still have no direct time, timeline on when Kenneth Murray will be returning. But Dan, this is an ed, this is a linebacker group that now obviously you're, you're pulling Kyle Van or you're putting him into that position to go through some of these reps because you may very well need him as some big time insurance. And the other guys that you have in this group, Troy, the Troy readers, the Damon Lloyds, the Amons, um, you know, you're going to need a lot of these guys, but Damon Lloyd has looked spectacular specifically today in practice was in on some great coverage had a batted pass that ultimately ended up as an interception for jc jackson going through the individual drills was very very smooth on um, the two bag drill where you go up against the running the running back to try to get to the quarterback (laughs) on the first rep he just blew right past him so damon lloyd today if i was to pick one name i know there's a couple but he had a solid day of practice today it's wild to think about this linebacking core, you know, and I think of him. I also think of Jamal Davis too. Like Jamal Davis, I think was in coverage today and had an interception. I believe he was trying to throw to, to Joe Reed and he's downfield getting an interception on like a diving play. And I'm like, this is what you want to see. Like, this is what I think from a, a core that you think is the least important to a Staley scheme, but for them to show out like that, to actually show up to be like, wow, like people on social media are like, wait, who is this Lloyd guy? Like that as a player, like that's all you can ask for. And so whether that means he stays on this roster, which he, at this point, I feel he should. But whether it's this roster or another 31 other teams that are looking for him, like he's going to make something. I mean, you might as well call him Devin Lloyd, first round pick out of Utah, because that's what he's looking like out here. <laughs> Dude's just balling out. I wanted to ask you this because, um, you know, coming Staley coming from under McVay's scheme and you obviously spending a lot of time covering the Rams. You've already been telling telling me, and we've seen it as far as just practice being a lot more efficient for Staley coming into his, his first year, or is it from his first year, excuse me. But in terms of what made the Rams defense so lethal, is it wasn't just the players; it was the, co- the, the it was the coaching, it was the um, you know having everybody buy into the same idea, making sure that everybody was on the same page. In terms of what you've seen the couple of days that you've been out here in practice, is it directly mirroring that? Do you see that everybody's really bought in, and is it is it an extension of that McFay scheme? Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's all about buy-in. It's about utilizing your players to the best of their ability, their skill sets, putting them in positions to succeed. <clears throat> and a lot of it predicates, you know, on having a couple star players, but utilizing those star players, obviously with the Rams having Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, but then here having Joe, Bo- Joey Bosa, now Cleo Mack and Derwin James on the back end. And then you added JC Jackson. And we talked about this actually, me and Dan did yesterday on, on a different show. And when the secondary is as dynamic as it can be, then it really funnels everything through the rest of the defense. And that's what this Staley defense predicates on is that strong, strong secondary, which last year, to put it bluntly, they just didn't have uh, partially due to injuries, but partially when, you know, Mike Davis goes from CB1 last year to CB4 this year because of the talent level increase. Um, it just allows them to do so much more. So we've seen definitely at camp the buy in, the culture, all that is absolutely real. But I think to the talent addition, now they can really utilize those scheme sets and those those systems that he's put in place last year. And now everyone's really buying into those systems. Talk about the rookies. So everyone's kind of seen Zion Johnson, who today looks like a brick wall at some point. Like he's got such a great base. Then you got guys like Tito on defensive line who was going up he against him. Play. He had a good play today. Uh, you got Isaiah Spiller, who I think is looking good today. JT Woods. Spiller, yeah. he, he is such a young kid. I'm like, man, but he's he's thick. Like he's good to go. Um, overall, like the, the rookies are making an impact and I don't remember exactly what show it was, but it talked about how important the rookies were to our team last year and looking at it now, like these rookies, other than Zion Johnson, like he's probably the one that's slotted in to start, but you're seeing kind of meaningful reps from some of these other guys and you're seeing improvements, which I'm not sure if people were really expecting to see as much flashes as we're getting. I I think it's just an aspect again, Dan, of the, of the coaching aspect, um, you know, what Brandon Staley is instilling in this system and getting the players to believe. So having guys like Dean Leonard, the way that he showed up to camp, again, not immaculate. He's had his ups and downs. I thought he had a better practice today. But when you get that many rookies on your team having 
positive plays. And again, I know that we're just talking about a few days of pads and we have not started the regular season off, not even preseason games yet, but still it's encouraging to see that that many of the rookies that you chose rather than just your top two guys come out and stand out and practice like this and on a consistent basis. You mentioned real quick, you mentioned Dean Leonard. He had a great play going up against Mike Williams. We saw on the sideline with, I think it was seven on seven, 11 on 11. And because Mike Williams isolated on him and we were thinking like, Oh man, I wonder if this is going to work. Dean Leonard, clamped him down to the point where he had to make a check down went to the i think it was a tight end on the flat like dean letter looks like he belongs like yes he's gonna have his up and down he's gonna lose some but like for a rookie to come in like that going up against a big body guy like mike williams and to actually deliver like it's promising yeah i, I think another aspect too because obviously the coaching is key the players themselves like buying in um and it, this sounds so simple but it's you know drafting with purpose and i think a lot of teams Great draft point. based on talent or or bpa or where they sit on the board and the Chargers now with Staley and Tom Telesco, who's obviously been here a while, but has kind of shifted his drafting mentality. It's more like, okay, what guys fit what we want to do that we are a schematically, but also, you know, as a person off the field, work ethic. Uh, and and there's the drafting guys that fit so they can come in and succeed eight, nine days in the camp. It's not going to take them three months to really feel like they get their holding. So I think that's a huge reason too. Yeah, I'm talking about, you're talking about the other guys, essentially. Uh, two, of the, movie. two of the Great other movie. guys. Um, one guy who's actually separating himself from the quote unquote other guys, DeAndre Carter. Ooh. My God. I mean, the the performances in practice just continue, continue, it seems like on a daily basis. Today in the final uh <laughs> set of eleven on elevens, I think it was what three or four of the f- the five final plays all went to Carter. And I immediately thought of the Dave Chappelle skit where he's like, Dylon, Dylon, <laughs> Dylon, Carter, Carter, Carter. Um but Dan, him and another guy that we've talked about, it, it's if they're if the Chargers end up keeping six wide receivers on this roster, Michael Bandy is another one that has really showed out here during camp. That's the mm-hmm. point. You know, DeAndre Carter, though, I, I got a chance to ask Joe Lombardi kind of like what his impact has been on this offense so far. And he's made his presence felt where like he's going to be an established player on this offense. I mean, today, literally the last play of 11 11 ended with a touchdown to DeAndre Carter in the red zone. And you're just seeing him all over the field. And the thing, is he he just seems like an offensive weapon that you just get the guy the ball in space and he'll make something happen, whether it's in special teams, obviously. But on offense, like you want that yards after the catch stuff. Him, Gerald Everett, Mike Williams talked about it. Like that's a big key to this offense to kind of get easier reps, easier yards. But Michael Bandy, same thing. Like he he kind of has an Austin Pro feel like that happened last year where how does that feel? I'm sorry. Where yeah. well, Bandy he, was here last year too, so I, I, it, at least they are very similar, right? But ba- but Bandy is having the impact that Austin Pearl had last year, where everyone's like, "Man, this Austin Pearl guy is going amazing." Still hurts my heart. Like Bandy is doing that same thing, where like you got to believe it. He doesn't make a team here; he's going to make it somewhere because people have noticed he's separating a lot. And I don't think people realize like with how deep this wide receiving class is, for guys like Bandy and Carter to be making impact plays like that to be noticed, like that says something. When you got Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Jalen Guyton, Josh Palmer are already doing stuff too. Like it's only so much football to go around, but like they're making the presence felt. Yeah. I've, I've talked about this uh, with the Rams also, but you know, when you get to those wider fever, five, six, seven, or RB three, fours, it's obviously special teams contributors too. But when you can be, say you're a return guy, but you can also have an impact on offense that makes you not only valuable to your team, but it's, it's, going to give you an actual shot to make the team Um, because if you're a guy that can only do special teams and really not be a contributor on offense then it's really hard to save a roster spot for a guy that's going to get maybe four to five reps a game whether it's punt or kick so when you can see guys like Mike Michael Banny really making an impact in the offense and you hope that trickles over into preseason games and we'll see more of it then that's a guy you really want to stick around that they can be so versatile so it's huge so uh we have a tight end on this team Gerald Everett who obviously people know about his versatility and that he's great with the yard of the catch, but he's also, I think Lombardi talked about it last time he's at the podium, not today, but previously, about he's actually a pretty good run blocker and his pass protection is pretty good a lot, too. Yeah. And there was a play that we saw during scrimmage today or during 11-11 where he had kind of his drag pull situation where he ended up blocking for Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler broke free for an easy touchdown. Like, you heard the cracks. Like, it was actually like, dang, I was actually a really good block. So, as much as people want to talk about him just being in the backfield and you know, as a wide receiver out, out wide, like he does a lot more than that. And I think the offense is going to exploit like his athleticism along with the versatility. And seeing him today, like he he's got some juice that they haven't seen at tight end for a while. 
talk about another tight end, Dan, Don, Donald Parham. Obviously, he was playing very well today before going down with his injury again. It doesn't doesn't appear to be serious. We saw him uh, off field after it took place. Still had all of his gear. Still walking. His back of his leg was iced up. So it was like what a quick. It was like a quick little like out fade kind of thing. Kind of out, out of the corner. Turned the ball was behind him, and then we we saw him just you know gingerly walk off the field. Trainers came over to him, was stretching it out. So hopefully it's something serious. We don't want to speculate on that, obviously. But before pre- <laughs> before that happened, he was having a great practice. And again, Dan, my highlight was he caught a great pass in the in the flat over the middle. And Alohi Gilman literally had to jump in the air and <laughs> essentially almost piggyback Donald Parham to the ground. That just tells you the size disparity between those two. But Dan, I think that this was, I think this is something that Coach Lombardi is going to learn from last year because obviously we thought with when the Chargers had Jared Cook and Donald Parham that when it came to the red zone inside the 20s, mm-hmm. that you're going to see a lot of two tight end matchups and try to have them mismatch because they're just, they were just such big body guys. I think Coach Lombardi may have learned from that and he's going to try to exploit that this year with Everett and Parham. I wish he was a little taller, Parham. I wish I was a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> Just huge out there. But <laughs> but yeah, those two tight end stats I think will definitely get utilized more. I think uh, what made it hard last year, and obviously it's you know a, a young newer play caller, at least with this team. I know he did stuff in Detroit and, and with the Saints too, but you don't want to take those great receivers off the field, right? Like you have the Mike Williams, the Keen Allen. Like, so you, in order to have two tight end sets, you're taking not necessarily those two, but you're taking other players off. But now with the growth of Parham and the addition of Everett, who is, I think, more talented than Jared Cook, I don't think anyone would argue that, you're not like substituting a great receiver for we want a two tight end set. So I think that's going to be a big key to this year, and we'll see it more. It was actually interesting. I, I noted to Jake when they were doing, um, I think it was 7-on-7, seven seven, I think it was 11-on-11, 11 11, you saw Jared Cook, or Jared Cook, you saw Gerald Everett, and you saw Donald Parham in the same set. And I was like, man, like as a defense, like those are polar opposites. Not not even talking about Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. Like, how do you guard that? Because each one of them is such a different archetype that is such a mismatch, and they're all on one team. But like, also, there's only one ball, and so it's going to be hard. You know, people talk. Oh, I wish they used so and so more. But like, there's so many guys on this team that it's going to be kind of. Every week's going to be different. Someone's yeah. going to have a big week. And how you week. guard them is ask the Chargers secondary because they've been pretty good so far in camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's also true. Yeah, nice little surprise today. Uh, Ex-Charger, Sean Merriman, was out there actually putting the pads on yeah. and going through. I mean, not not the pads, <laughs> like the pads. The protective for, pads. Yeah, the protective pads. <laughs> uh, and going through the, the drills with the edge group. And Dan, you got a quick comment with him after he came off the field just asking him just overall what his thoughts were. And he's like, they got a squad. They got a squad. So that was cool. Corey Legion was also out here signing autographs today on the field. Um, but just overall, I mean, take it in. First week and a half, essentially, of training camp here. I mean, overall impressions, is it is it is it better than, I mean, again, I know we're talking preseason football, haven't even taken a snap yet for the 2022 season. But it, have the expectations exceeded? Do you think that the, the excitement is even higher than it was just a short week ago? I know I'm usually the optimist. So this is probably going to be on no brand, question. but like I do think it has or exceeded those because I honestly think you know people talked about how excited they were for all these star players that came and the people in the draft and talking about J.C. Jackson and Cleo Mack and all that. But like it's different once you get them all together and actually performing together. Like how well are they going to gel? How was the synergy going to look? And I know it's hard in eleven on eleven, but like to see how much of a clamp that the defense has and kind of how much swag they have collectively without Derwin James out there, although he's out there and during walkthroughs. Like to see them all kind of come together and you can kind of start to picture like what this would actually look like. They sound great on paper. They sound great as, as like actual we players, but like they look like a team on defense that has played together much longer than what nine games of training camp. So I think it's got to be over exceeding expectations. And then you look at offense. I know people talked about like, oh, the Chargers don't have speed at wide receiver. They don't see DeAndre Carter. Like I know people might not think that he's like, dude, that guy is fast and it's hard to guard guys like that and when you have him Gerald Everett Keenan Allen Mike Williams Josh Palmer like that's a hard offense especially when the quarterback is Justin Herbert like how it's pretty good too. that's yeah. pretty darn good so I got I think it's over exceeding expectations fans are loving it this place has been packed every single time and it's being noticed and I think this is probably one of the favorite teams in the NFL right now very very much a sexy pick but I I personally think it's over exceeding, but what the hell do I know? I'm an optimist. Ryan? <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, I'm an optimist too, but but I, I think it's been, yeah, it's been what we expected and more. And you, I won't repeat a lot because you said a lot of good points, but 
the expectation was this with all these players, and they've lived up to that so far for as much as you can in a two-hour, hour-and-a-half training camp session. Um, but, yeah, I think the hype is real. Um, I think <laughs> we're going to see it this season, which we're excited for, and now they just got to keep stacking bricks week by week. Well, I'm the pessimist of the, these three individuals, so I'm going to stay on brand for me. Um, and I won't go as far as to say – I won't go as far as to say that, but I'll tell you what the one thing that I'm probably – the most surprised at and very encouraged at going into this season is when you look at the depth of what is on this team this year, as opposed to last year. And you have guys like we talked about the Carters, the bandies, the fifth and the sixth guys at this position, the, uh, uh, the Damon Lloyd's essentially the fifth and the sixth linebacker at that position. When you see guys like that, this deep in the roster coming out and performing and they're no, no one they're coming to the roster spot, the interior defensive line, when you know how many Jeez. guys and the dog fight that it's going to be for that position group, essentially. Forrest Merrow had a day today. Exactly. So when you see, you know, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh guys coming out here and performing, that's what's probably the most encouraging thing that I've seen. So would you say on the whole, would you say, I mean, I think everyone kind of saw that the stars wise, like the Charger stars, like they're as good as advertised. But I mean, the, Keenan, the, Keenan Allen looks like he's just getting out of floating. Bed <laughs> and, you know, hey, grab my morning coffee on my way to getting a 20 yard out route to the mm-hmm. sidelines. Clockwork. But so like the starters, I think everyone, they are what we all thought they were. But I think it's the kind of the backup, the back end of that 53 roster that I think has probably been the biggest uh, en- joy to watch. Because mm-hmm. you're like, man, these guys are actually playing and the uh, fellow teammates are noticing it, which I think is been cool to hear. I'm hooting mm-hmm. all are going to do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. You said it. I don't need to add anything to it. I think it's been great. <laughs> so we're wrapping up day nine training camp tomorrow. They're going to be out here going up against each other for a little scrimmage. Um, Another over house. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few people here. Maybe we'll get to see sunset. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, what should we expect from that? Is there anything that we're kind of wishing that we saw more from today that we can see there? I like Coach Lombardi's comments on that when someone asked him that. The pony's like, well, I'm sure some people are excited about it and then others not so much. Others are sore. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that'll be interesting. I mean, kind of fun yeah. to watch. I'm pretty sure all the stars will be out here for that one. Yeah. Um, not sure how much you're going to be able to glean off of it because I'm sure they're not going to go 100%. They yeah. can't. Um, but as we wrap up day nine, what's your biggest takeaway as you kind of got through this day? We went through the thing you liked most, your highlight, but your biggest takeaway in terms of like what stood out to you as your overall feeling of the day? Just today? Just today. Carter, 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 Carter. Right? Uh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go Devin. No, Damon <laughs> Lloyd, uh, who's just been looking great. We've talked about linebackers a lot. A lot of people have voiced concern about the depth of linebacker doesn't seem to be an issue at, at all. And I've said many times, the system doesn't really require that either. But when you have the depth like that and guys stepping up, it's been great. Yeah, and I guess for me, it's probably got to be Rashawn Slater last year as advertised, Zion Johnson this year as advertised, being able to go back-to-back years, getting offensive line that good. Like, that's hard to do. And they swung out of the park for both of those. So, uh, day nine, success. Last thing I'll say, one of my favorite things about every time coming to camp besides hanging out with you guys is Aww. is when they're doing stretches, just watching coach Staley co- well, not watching the stretches. I, I saw what you did there, <laughs> <Gayo>. <laughs> but uh, when they're doing stretches, watching coach Staley, who he's with every time, whether it's, uh, I don't know for sure. I assume they're coaching, but maybe he's just having a fun conversation with them, but just seeing how what involved was for dinner? he is even during the stretching periods is fun to watch. So, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that actually Kyle Van Noy, again, today was one of the first ones that Brandon Staley was talking to as they were stretching for how much those two have kind of come together and how much do you see them communicate during training camp? Like that might be one of the top three biggest off season transactions that isn't really mm-hmm. talked about as much for how much of a leader Kyle Van Noy is and knowing what happened with Kenneth Murray. Is he going to be back Drew tranquil? I don't know. We don't know. That's, I think that's going to be something that's going to be a lot bigger than people realize. Mm-hmm. Huge. Huge. So Jake, anything else you want to tell the great friends, Ryan, anything else you want to tell them before we head out of here? Day nine in the books. Stay cool, folks, because it's hot here in training camp. <laughs> and stay sweet. It's the weekend. And stay frosty. <laughs> shout out the director. He's going to say, channel your inner director. <laughs> yeah, shout out the director. All right, for Jake Hefner, for Ryan Dyer, this is Dan Wilkenstein. We'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time on Chargers Unleashed.